fourth and fifth graders. I am so happy for those of you who are coming back to hear more of the story. Uh, we'll get started right away. Uh, as you remember, we're, we've been reading about Nan and she was in the middle of cleaning the chimneys in an all girls school, uh, which she hates because she knows that the girls at school always look down at her. And when she was cleaning a chimney, she was trying to get closer to here because she knew they were talking about her and got stuck. So Roger gave her the devil's nudge to try to get her unstuck. Uh, I'm realizing that it would probably kill her. So she was in the fireplace, like in the chimney when they lit a fire underneath it. And essentially she's now burning up. So we'll find out what happens next. Sometimes on nights when there was no food to eat, the girl in her sweep used to make story soup. The girl would fill her pockets with trash that she found on the streets, scraps of paper or trampled strings or bits of colored glass. At the end of the day, she would present these things to the sweep. Make story soup, she would tell him. Ho ho, the sweep would always exclaim, rubbing his belly with both hands. You've brought us ingredients for a right feast. He would look at the ingredients, holding each one between his blackened fingers like a Mm, he would say slowly, very interesting, this one. Lots of potential. Into the pot, the girl would shout. She used to go mad with impatience. The sweep always took too long with this part. The sweep would remove his hat in a position. He would nestle the crown in his lap and put the ingredients inside. He would mix them around with the end of his broom. Sometimes he would hum to close his eyes and pretend to smell the story cooking inside. He used to close his eyes and pretend to, to smell the story cooking inside. He would add imaginary pinches of salt and pepper. And then he would open his eyes and serve up a piping hot story. He might reach into the hat and produce half of an oyster shell. There was once a haberdasher who made cats for fairies, but one day he entered his workshop to find the cats had been stolen. His only clue, one strand of hair left on the ground. And so saying, he might produce a tattered piece of string. The sweep would take out each object as he talked, weaving it into the story. Before long, he would have worked in the glass and paper scraps and whatever other ingredients that she had brought for story soup. And even though they had eaten nothing, the girl still ended her day with a belly full of story, which sticks to ribs even better than mutton. There was one pot of story soup that the girl would never forget. The sweep had been collecting ingredients for a long time, gathering them and keeping them, but never using them. She would watch him review the objects before bed, placing each one in the crown of his hat. A doll's eye for wonder, he would mutter, a feather for kindness, a thimble for mending, a wooden chessman for courage, a swaddle for warmth. She knew that they were important. Can we make story soup tonight? The girl said one night. If you're too tired, I can make it. The sweep had not eaten any food. He folded a scrap of soft blue cloth and gently laid it in his hat. There's one final ingredient. What is it? The girl leaped to her feet. She thought it might be a new sort of game. I bet you've hidden it for me to find. No. The sweep closed his eyes. The spaces beneath his lids were hollow and dark. It's not hidden. Tell me and I can fetch it she said. The sweep shook his head and secreted the ingredients back into his pockets. His hands were shaking. Soon enough, you'll know the story. The way he said this, it made the story sound like something that he didn't want to tell. Of course, this made her want to hear it all the more. But the girl never heard the last story. She never learned what the final ingredient was. Nan Sparrow was not dead. She'd been dreaming of the sweep. They had been together making story soup, something that she had all but forgotten about. Little Nan had crawled inside his hat to find the ingredients, and the crown of the hat had turned into a burning chimney, and she remembered crying out for the sweep and trying to escape. And then she was alone. Nan released a whimper. She could feel a cold wooden floor beneath her. She must have lost consciousness during the nudge. But if so, how did she escape? She tried to swallow. Her throat was cracked and dry. A carapace of soot encased her lips and nose and eyelids. She scraped the soot from her eyes, which stung and watered. She blinked, trying to see where she was. 
she saw rafters directly above her. She saw her own breath. She saw cobwebs and shadows in a thin moonlight. She could see a chimney stack that had collapsed in on itself, a black abscess of bricks and mortar devoured by fire. It was the seminary chimney. Nan was in a low crawl space above the attic, barely large enough for her to stand in. A porthole window at one end let in shafts of pale light. She ran her fingers over the escaped. She looked down at her clothes, which were charred and tattered. She noticed the place where her pocket had bursted, like the flesh beneath a scab. She checked her arms and legs and even the soles of her feet. Somehow she didn't have even a single burn. She should have been crushed by the rubble, burned by the fire, but somehow she had survived. Had she been passed out long enough to heal from her injuries? Surely not. The ache in her head subsided to a dull throbbing, and she now realized that she was very cold. She looked around for something with which to cover herself to fend off the chill. She noticed something on the floor beside her. It was small and round and dark gray. It was her char. The little clod of soot had warmed her, but as she did, something unusual happened. The char moved. It did not move far. It rolled only far enough to escape her grasp. Nan had seen the char roll before. It would sometimes tumble from her open palm in the mornings, but never with such intention. She shook her head clear and reached for it again. The char moved again. Now Nan was coming. She lunged forward, aiming not where the char was, but where it would be when it tried to dart away. Got you, she cried as she crashed to the floor. She had the thing cup. She sat up and slowly, slowly opened her hands, staring at the thing inside. She knew the sweep's gift as well as she knew her own self. Trembling. It was alive. Whatever happened inside that chimney must have changed the char, bringing it to life. All thoughts of thirst and cold and pain left Nan. All she could think about was this little thing. It seemed so frightened and it was so small. Don't be afraid. She noticed the two divots etched into its face, dark as a shadow's shadow. They looked so much like eyes. Nan stared at the thing. The thing's tears and she blinked. Hello, little thing, she whispered. I've waited so long to meet you. The thing blinked back. The sweep had raised Nan to believe in impossible, Nan said when it had finished its story. It's not every day that someone is born. The thing nodded. Nan sat back on her heels. What did soot creatures eat? Did they wear clothes? How was she meant to take care of it? I suppose we should start by giving you a proper name, she said. I can you are, the thing nodded. Let me think, Nan said. She lay down on her stomach and stared at the creature in front of her. It smelled like crackling embers on a cold day. Its surface was soft as a bed of ashes. It was as dark as fresh coal. Maybe your name can be about how you're made of burned up things, she said. We could call you Sootly. The thing wrinkled its face. Ashkin? The thing made a retching sound. Emberton? The thing glared at her. It screwed up its face and a gust of flames burst from its little body. Ow, Nan said, pulling back. You nearly took off my nose. The thing gave a sort of curl and rolled away from her, burning a trail of char in the floorboards. Well, I'm trying the best I can, Nan called. You don't have to be rude. But the thing would have no more of it. Nan scratched the back of her neck. It was clear that the thing did not want a silly name. She supposed this made sense. She thought of how it made her feel when Roger called her Cinderella. She thought about what she had called the thing before it came to life. What well, about a real person name then, but with the word Char on it? Maybe Charlemagne or Charles or just Charlie? The thing turned towards her. The thing opened its mouth and made a sound of sort of croaking sound. It sounded nothing like Charlie. Nan smiled. I like it too. And we're going to stop there for today. I hope that you will tune in tomorrow for some more of Sweep.